in a recent video I took apart a, an Ethernet cable tester so that we could see what was inside. Now I've, I'm um, quite interested in cable testers at the moment so I ordered this one as well. This is another inexpensive cable tester. Um, this one should also have a USB port on it because I'm quite interested in USB testing USB ports testing USB cables especially um, uh, micro USB which is the most common type of cables that I come across these days but here we are so a cable tester like the other one if you if you saw that video um, if not I'll link it up here so like the other one it's in in two pieces so there's a remote side and a powered side and also. okay so there's a small manual in here to describe how it works and oh I see that comes apart like so. So um, I'll dig out some cables and we'll um, we'll give it a go. So first of all, we'll put the battery in. So we need the the uh, nine volt type battery for this one. And that's got a beeper in it. You can see it's got some more of these security screws so when we take it apart in a minute uh, we we'll use that same screwdriver that seems to fit the triangular holes. Uh, right so all right so you hold it in switch it on We've got the RJ45 there. There's one on the side also. There we go. So you can just test a cable against the uh, the unit itself, which is quite handy. So like the tester that we saw before, this is uh, sending a current through each wire in turn and lighting the LEDs. It doesn't seem that the ground is connected there, so that last one isn't lighting up. Um, and there's also this remote, so you can plug in the remote also, uh, like the other unit we saw. And again, the the G isn't lighting up, is it? Um, yeah, so it's a bit more flexible than the um, the other one that we looked at. Uh, All right. So if you hold the button down for different amounts of time, it does different things. So uh, now we're getting. So this is manual mode now. So so you can step through all of the lines yourself. And you can also change the speed with a with a quick uh, key press. It's changing the speed, so it looks like there are three different speeds there in the automatic mode. So that's pretty nice. Um, right, let's put a USB cable on because I mainly bought this unit for testing USB. So obviously this has only got the the old type uh, connector. that in there and then this one goes in the top okay so now you're getting just the 
bottom four oh and the and the ground at the end there so I guess I guess that's the um, exposed metal I guess we can test that can't we I just touch that on here yeah so now only the G is lighting up so that's the the exposed metal on the screen of the cable and then the four connectors actually inside the cable um, correspond to the first one two three four here so that's pretty useful um, I mean it's a shame it doesn't also have uh, mini USB micro USB but I think I might do that I might modify this unit and add some more connectors um, so that I can make it into a, a more useful cable tester There we go, I'll hold it down for five seconds to switch it off. Um, right, so the remote, now we can just crack the remote open. And well, it's all surface mount, but it looks very similar to the design of the other unit that we took apart. So you've got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine LEDs surface mount LEDs and there's three diodes in there there's also these um, well they look like surface mount resistors but they say zero 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 so they're links actually they're just links for jumping over tracks I think so um, with the diodes here that's very similar to um, the design of the other unit so so um, some of the leads have a diode uh, going in reverse across the LED so that you can route current back through um, some of the uh, some of the cables. So let's get these security screws out again and uh, see what's inside the master unit also. This screwdriver is excellent at taking out these security screws. Okay, so this is a slightly more complex design than the other one, I think. Well, we, we have the multiple rows of LEDs, of course. Uh, there's a chip here, which I presume is a 4017. Let's have a look. In actual fact, we can't see because they, they seem to have rubbed off it, all, of the, uh, all of the text so that you can't see what it is. But I imagine that it is a 4017. Actually, this isn't a 4017. I think it's some kind of microcontroller because, I mean, first of all, it's got the wrong number of pins. This is only a 14 pin um, device where the 4017 is 16, but also the power pins are in the wrong place. So the, um, the center pins are um, plus five volts and ground. Um, and also if we have a poke about with the uh, the logic probe let's see if I can get this visible on the screen uh, so this pin down here is some kind of clock output that's actually making that top left LED flash in fact And then um, we've got these pins here are uh, ground 8, 7, uh, 6 is just above the clock there. You see that? So it flashes with number 6. And then we've got um, 
one, two, three, four, five up that side. So I think it's it's some kind of microcontroller that's doing all the all the timing and clocking, um, and no doubt understanding the uh, the long and short presses of the button. Um, so this is a rather more sophisticated uh, model than the than the one that we looked at before, um, and quite good because it's got the USB on it also. So here's the unit on uh, AliExpress. Uh, you can see three pound eighty four, so about five dollars, five US dollars, um, and. Yeah, so very cheap for um, for quite a useful handheld device. So we are all reassembled and back together again now, and uh, yeah, quite a useful device. So thanks very much for watching. See you next time.